That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, we're going to go through, talk about some of these week four matchups. Yesterday, we went through, talked about some must-start running backs. Here, we're going to talk about some must-start wide receivers. These are guys that we've had a lot of questions about in the live streams over the past few nights. You know I live stream every single night, answering as many questions as I can. We also answer a ton of questions down there in the comment section. And as we go through this intro, let me pull up our last YouTube video so we can pick some random comments to give a fantasy flock network hat to y'all know every single day we're giving at least four fantasy flock network hats away for the people who go down there subscribe to the channel drop a like on the video and leave a comment if you are subscribed every time you leave a like on a video and leave a comment at the same time you get entered to win a fantasy flock network hat and our first comment winner is going to be coming from Braxton, who says, Day 7 of asking for a hat. Keep up the great work, Mason. You're killing it, my friend. Thank you so much. And then our next one coming out from Corian. I believe that's how we're saying this. As much love, Mason. Appreciate the content. No, thank you so much for supporting the channel. And if you win a Fantasy Flock Network hat, just go to the description of the video. Send me an email with the account you left that comment with. And give me your physical address so I can send that out ASAP. And yeah, that should be it. Let's go through and let's talk about some of these must start wide receivers. And our first guy here is going to be someone that's been, my God, so disappointing, Allen Robinson. And with Allen Robinson, before we even talk about the matchup that he has this week, I need to address something. I came out and in so many videos this year, so many live streams, I made fun of everybody who is going through and taking Terry McLaurin over Allen Robinson. Now, at this point, this is looking horrendous. With Allen Robinson right now, he is the wide receiver 71. He is the wide receiver 71 on the season. Now, of course, you're going to see some positive regression coming for Allen Robinson. And the reason why we are so excited about him coming into this season was centered around the historical production that we had had combined with his age, combined with his profile, everything shaping up. And for me, looking at this situation, I thought that he was an extremely high floor wide receiver and an extremely high ceiling guy. So if you're looking at the amount of target volume he's had in this offense, I mean, he is still drawing targets at an extremely high rate. I mean, just like you would expect from Allen Robinson, who's been a top 10 wide receiver before with Mitchell Trubisky, with Blake Bortles. I mean, you would assume that he's going to continue to come out, see 25 to 30% of his team's targets. And that's exactly what's happened. I mean, this past week, he actually had 30% of the targets for the Chicago Bears. Now, keep in mind, the Chicago Bears offense with Justin Fields, completely imploded. And maybe this is on me because y'all know I spent the entire offseason on that dynasty channel talking about why Justin Fields was a very overrated quarterback. And instead we wanted Trey Lance and we talked about that in depth. Maybe it was just very hypocritical for me to go through and talk about how much we loved Allen Robinson. And at the same time, we wanted to be avoiding Justin Fields everywhere we could. I just didn't think that Fields was going to be potentially worse than the combination of Blake Bortles and Mitchell Trubisky. Throw Nick Foles in that. But with Allen Robinson, he has had 21 targets so far this year. The volume has been there, and we know that we want to be chasing that volume. Now, the efficiency has been atrocious. He's only had 10 receptions, 86 receiving yards. He had a receiving touchdown in week two, and oh my gosh, that receiving touchdown was not there. I mean, he would be way lower than wide receiver 71. But still, if you're looking at the profile, you're looking at the opportunity, and most importantly, the matchup here against the Detroit Lions, I think this will be a spot that you most likely have to start Allen Robinson going up against Detroit, understanding that this is a game where the Chicago Bears should definitely have a much easier time moving the ball down the field against the Detroit Lions compared to what they actually had against the Cleveland Browns. I mean, we know the Browns, they have a great defense. They're going to be one of the most talented teams in the NFL in 2021. Now, with Allen Robinson here, I think we're still going to be viewing him as a player that is concerning. We want to be selling in the long term. You cannot sell Allen Robinson now, however, because, I mean, you know, I'm the last person to ever come out and say, oh, we need to sell Leonard Fournette. We need to sell this player that nobody wants. And just because it's going to make me look smart, just because nobody's ever going to come laugh at me for it. No, I always tell you to trade away players that are just hot. I mean, the players that everybody are talking about, hyping them up, like David Montgomery after week one, he was a clear sell for us. Debo Samuel after week one, he was a clear sell for us. Here, Allen Robinson, 
I mean, you're not going to be able to sell him right now. After this past week with Justin Fields just looking atrocious, I mean, nobody's going to give you anything for Allen Robinson. I think we start him this week, and then we look to sell going into week five. I think that's going to be the time period where maybe we get the small t uptick from Allen Robinson. If Justin Fields can move the ball down the field effectively at all, we've already seen that he's going to lean on Allen Robinson heavily. So if the efficiency comes with the offense just to just say slightly below average from an NFL standpoint, then I think we could see Allen Robinson be a solid wide receiver too this week. Now our next wide receiver, we haven't seen him have a good week since week one, but I mean, he was on the COVID list this past week, so can't really blame him. Antonio Brown. Now, I really want to focus in on this matchup that we're going to have between Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. And something we've talked about a lot here is that the quote unquote revenge game narrative it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's not like these professional athletes can go through and they can just completely change the way they're playing because they're playing against their former team. And they're like, oh, okay, it's not like we just got millions of dollars on the line. It's not like this is my entire livelihood. Let's give it 80% every game we play. But if it's a revenge game, then we're going to go out. We're going to give it our, our all. We're going to give it 100% effort. Now, with that being said, there are some instances where I think some narratives can actually play into what we are doing with fantasy football rather than just looking at the numbers. And I think this would actually make sense for this entire Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense and that you're seeing Tom Brady this game. This game, he is going to pass Drew Brees in the all-time passing yardage list. That is a milestone. He's going up against Bill Belichick and his former team. So what I'm viewing here is a situation where no Tom Brady isn't going to become drastically a much better quarterback. But however, what you can end up finding is maybe Bruce Arians just allows Tom Brady to just go, wild maybe he goes you know what we're completely abandoning the run it doesn't matter if we get to the fourth quarter and we're up by multiple touchdowns we're gonna let tom brady go off try to get 400 passing yards this game that way he can have that storyline because you could easily see a narrative going through and affecting the actual play calling and the actual gameplay and going into something and i wouldn't be surprised here if tom brady's allowed to throw this ball 50 plus times this game i, I mean i don't necessarily think you should be that surprised either you see quote unquote revenge game actually mattering for players in the NBA if you're trying to dictate their own volume understanding that in the NBA players can actually once they get the ball just put up a shot it doesn't necessarily matter if it's like a wide receiver who actually needs to draw that target so I think you're going to see something similar here with this entire Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense maybe skewing very pass happy while Antonio Brown has been the wide receiver 37 so far this season on a per game basis he's had 10 targets in two games six receptions 138 receiving yards and a receiving touchdown to go along with it I mean he looked fantastic in week one yes it was a nice matchup against the Dallas Cowboys but still I think this will be a spot that you can see Tom Brady throwing the ball 50 plus times so you start Godwin you start Evans you start Antonio Brown you start Rob Gronkowski you're starting everyone now our next wide receiver someone that we didn't love coming into the season because his team situation but right now I actually think it looks really nice for him it's going to be Chase Claypool now keep in mind we're recording this the day before it's going to come out so what I'm asking for you is to definitely go through and monitor the situation for Juju Smith Schuster and Deontay Johnson going into Sunday but as of now Juju Smith Schuster did not participate in practice so it's looking like Juju with the rib injury is potentially going to be missing this game and you're going to see a massive bump up in the overall volume you should expect from Chase Claypool now keep in mind Yes, this past week, you had the Pittsburgh Steelers having to really just throw the ball over and over and over again to try to catch back up with the Cincinnati Bengals. But at the same time here, I mean, who are they going up against this week? They're going up against the Green Bay Packers. We can acknowledge the fact that Aaron Rodgers is most likely going to be able to put up points early. And from here, this is going to continue to have to be a situation where, yes, Ben Roethlisberger's toast. That's why I wasn't a fan of drafting any of these Pittsburgh Steelers players outside of Juju Smith-Schuster when you were getting them like three rounds after Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool. But here, if we're looking at this situation, the volume is going to be too damn high to pass up on Chase Claypool. While Najee Harris, yes, got 19 targets this past week. Obviously, that's going to regret I mean, it's not like he's going to be coming away with double digit targets every single week. And yes, Deontay Johnson looks like he is training towards playing this Sunday. But if Juju misses, this will still be a spot that Claypool is going to have such a large role on this offense where he had 15 targets in week three. He had nine receptions, 96 receiving yards. We know this is someone with a bunch of touchdown upside based on his frame, based on what we had with the goal line usage in 2020, his rookie season. So assuming Juju Smith-Schuster does not play, or if Deontay Johnson doesn't play, if either one of those players miss, I think you're just going to see the bump up in target share for Chase Claypool, where he's someone that you have to start. Now, our next wide receiver is actually going to be a grouping of wide receivers, and 
I'm surprised to see the questions we've had in the live stream. Like, I wouldn't even think we have to put these guys in this list. But let's throw on Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb. Yeah, now, yes, I understand that. Dalton Schultz got a considerable amount of volume with Blake Jarwin this past week. They were leaning on the tight ends in the week before that. They were leaning on Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard against the Los Angeles Chargers. But do not overthink it, please, here. I, I mean, with Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, they're still going to be playing in one of the best offenses in the NFL from an overall volume standpoint. They are still great talents. Yes, Amari Cooper has been very disappointing over the past two weeks. He's been dealing with that rib injury. We can assume that he's most likely going to be healthier this upcoming week. Just understanding that, I mean, if he was able to play back in week two, I mean, he should be probably good by the time we get to week four and week five. And you're looking at Amari Cooper. And yes, he's been disappointing over the past two weeks. But just going back to what he did in week one, I mean, his season-long numbers here still look fantastic. I mean, he's had 26 targets this season, 19 receptions, 189 receiving yards, and two receiving touchdowns at the same time. C.D. Lamb's the wide receiver, 18 right now with 27 targets, 18 receptions, 251 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown as well. So I know this is a boring call, but I'm only including it on here because we've had a lot of questions in the live streams going, oh, like, can I start Amari Cooper this week against the Carolina Panthers? Yeah, the Panthers have a pretty tough defense, but the Dallas Cowboys offense is better. The Dallas Cowboys offense is going to dictate that you have to start Dak Prescott. You have to start CeeDee Lamb. You have to start Amari Cooper every single week. Please don't overthink it here. I, I hate that we have to include him, but we're going to. Now, our next wide receiver is going to be someone that I did not love coming into the season. With Kenny Galladay here, it's very similar to what we have with Chase Claypool. I mean, Kenny Galladay, y'all know we didn't really like him at all coming into the year. Then after he suffers his injury, usually, I mean, this is a situation where you see that player falling three, four rounds. And I'm like, okay, I guess we have to take him here because we did 200 plus drafts and we were very rarely drafting him at the beginning. But Kenny Galladay, so far, the wide receiver, 64 on the season. And yes, Kenny Galladay himself is currently dealing with that hip injury. He's been limited in practice. And I definitely encourage you to go through and continue to monitor that going into Sunday. But as of now, you have no Sterling Shepard. You have no Darius Slayton practicing for the New York Giants. Now, keep in mind, you need to monitor this going into Sunday. But if both of those wide receivers miss, this is going to be a smash spot for Kenny Galladay. Where, yes, I mean, he has a difficult matchup against the New Orleans Saints. But this will still be a spot where we have seen Kenny Galladay back in 2019 in particular be a low-end wide receiver one in fantasy. And if you're looking at a wide receiver room that has Kenny Galladay, Kadarius Toney, Colin Johnson. Now, trust me, I really want to root on our guy, Colin Johnson. We actually had psychology with him at the University of Texas. So considering the fact that he was in my class, of course, I want to root for the guy. We saw him on campus all the time. I watched him every single year that we were there. But with that being said, it's just not a good call to assume that Kadarius Tony at this point in the season, y'all know Kadarius Tony was a very bad rookie prospect coming out of Florida and Colin Johnson who got cut by the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's a very bad idea to assume that they're going to be able to take up a decent amount of targets. Evan Ingram, I mean, clearly was not 100% healthy coming back from that calf injury this past week. And then are you really going to just assume that you're going to get Saquon Barkley with every single touch in this offense? Now, trust me, y'all know we had Saquon Barkley as our number one by low candidate this past week. And I think Barkley still is in a great spot knowing that Saquon Barkley can easily see seven to eight targets out of this backfield. But the number one guy that's left here is going to be Kenny Galladay. There's really nobody else to go to. Galladay's been disappointing. He's only had 19 targets, 11 receptions, 166 receiving yards so far with no receiving touchdowns. But if you see the touchdown regression come hit Kenny Galladay, which of course is entirely possible to see given his frame, knowing how they may have to lean on him in the red zone if they really don't have any other options. Kenny Galladay, definitely a wide receiver. You need to be jamming in this week, assuming we do not have Sterling Shepard or Darius Slayton. Now, our next wide receiver here will be someone that was very impressive this past week, Odell Beckham Jr. Now, with Odell here going up against the Minnesota Vikings, I know historically the Vikings have had a pretty good defense. This is not a defensive unit that I'm worried about at all in 2021, however. And with Odell Beckham Jr., he comes back in week three, and he sees a fantastic workload where he actually has nine targets. He has five receptions, 77 receiving yards, also gets a rush out of the backfield as well, which kind of really tells us that this coaching staff is 100% willing to just believe that Odell Beckham Jr. is back from that knee injury. And I think with Odell, I mean, 
mean, this is someone that very similar to Kareem Hunt. Jarvis Landry leaving this offense is just going to be leaving so many targets on the table that you're going to have to start him every single week. And with the Minnesota Vikings, I know the Vikings and the Browns, these are both teams that want to lean on the run, but the Minnesota Vikings have actually been very effective in throwing the ball over the past few weeks. We saw this last week against the Seattle Seahawks. Kirk Cousins has looked pretty good this season. I mean, he put up a fight against the Arizona Cardinals as well, only losing to the Cardinals by one point. I think this can be a spot where it's a slightly higher scoring than a lot of people are expecting. And if Odell Beckham Jr. is just going to have that very large role wherever we do not have Jarvis Landry, like we said in the buy low video, I think we start Odell Beckham Jr. every single week until Jarvis Landry comes back, expecting that he will have that high baseline of production. He can see 25% of his team's targets. And by the time Jarvis Landry works his way back, that's when we can sell Odell Beckham Jr. But for now, you're going to be holding him. For now, you're going to be starting him. Now, our last wide receiver, someone that does not have a good matchup. It simply does not matter with the amount of target volume he should have. Let's go over with Cortland Sutton here. And with Cortland Sutton, if you're looking at the season-long numbers, they're a little bit skewed because obviously you had Jerry Judy back in week one. But if you're looking at the past two weeks for Cortland Sutton, this is someone without Jerry Judy in the offense, he's averaged eight targets a game. He's averaged 98 receiving yards a game and seven receptions as well. So the volume has been fantastic for Cortland Sutton. Obviously, he has that alpha X wide receiver size. Now I'm very worried about this matchup going up against the Baltimore Ravens. For whatever reason, the Denver Broncos are actually one-point favorites here. I think we would definitely be taking the Ravens plus one compared to the Denver Broncos. But with that being said, I'm expecting it to be a low-scoring game. It's not going to matter. However, just because with the additional injury that you have to KJ Hamler, right now in this receiving core, it is really thinned out. I mean, you know I wasn't a fan of Cortland Sutton at all coming into the season. Looking at this room saying they have Jerry Judy, they have Noah Fant, they have KJ Hamler, they have Tim Patrick, they have an offense that we're not expecting to be at the top of the NFL with their passing volume. So I hated Cortland Sutton coming into the year. But now he's going up against Noah Fant, Tim Patrick. It, that's just a completely different scenario. So then Cortland Sutton, very similar to Odell Beckham Jr. You're going to be starting him every single week, despite the matchup. Once we actually get Jerry Judy coming back from that high ankle sprain, there we can go through and there we can actually look to sell high on Cortland Sutton. But for now, he's going to be someone that you have to start. Now, thank you for watching the video. I really hope that y'all enjoyed it. And make sure you go down there, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, leave that comment as well if you want to get entered to win a Fantasy Flock Network hat. I'll be live streaming tonight as well. So make sure you hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you can come out to the live stream. And yeah, that's all I got for y'all. And have a great day.